So um, in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we know this is a rhombus. So now we need to go back and review some of the things we know about a rhombus. All right. So in our notes about rhombuses, a couple things that we talked about. One, a rhombus we know has all equal measurements, right? Bing, 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 bing. OK? Has all equal measurements. We also know that um, the diagonals, yeah, they bisect them just like any parallelogram, right? right? They cut each diagonal in half. Um, however, the diagonals are not equal in measurements like they were for a rectangle and a square. So your diagonals are not always equal. All right? But there was something that was very, very important. AJ, if you just want to flip that over, please, for me. There was something that was very, very important about rhombuses, about their diagonals. Does anybody remember on their notes? What was very important about the diagonals of a rhombus? Yes, Blake? They're perpendicular. They're perpendicular. So if they're perpendicular, that means they create a 90-degree a angle. So. I can write that in for all of them, right? But I'm just going to write it in right there. So if that's 90 degrees, that means all of those angles are going to be 90 degrees within here. So now let's go and look at what we know. They say PQ is 3 squared of 2, and AP equals 3. OK. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what is this, uh, Philip? What is this shape right here? A triangle. What type of triangle? Remember how we learned how to classify it? It's a right triangle. And when we have a right triangle, what is one of those theorems that starts with a P that we can use that we just did on our last homework quiz? Rhymes, rhymes starts with a P and rhymes with Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem, right? We just did this, right? We just did it. You're trying to find AQ. We don't know AQ. So again, what I take, tell you guys is extract the triangle. Extract this, what you're trying to find. So here's what we have, 3 square root of 2, 3x right triangle. Is that enough information for us to apply the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, of course it is. We have, we have um, a leg and a hypotenuse. So remember, in this case, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals C squared. Well, here, we'll call that, these are your A's and your B's, right? Those are your two legs, and that's going to equal your C. So I can say 3 squared plus x squared equals 3 square root of 2 squared. Now, I know we haven't dealt a lot with the radicals, all right? So I can fully understand if you guys had some problems with this. But you guys have been introduced to radicals um, before. 3 squared is going to equal 9 plus x squared. 3 times square root of 2 times 3 square root of 2. Well, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 2 squared, which is just going to be 2. 3 times 3 is going to be 9. 9 times 2 will be 18. Would you agree? Do you guys agree that something squared means that multiplied by itself, right? 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 equals the square root of 2 squared, right? The, op the inverse operation of adding Berta is subtracting. subtracting. The opposite um, operation of division, Samantha, is multiplication, right? The opposite, the opposite operation of taking the square root, Sierra, is squaring, right? These are opposites. So therefore, those undo each other, and you're just left with 18. So that's what I said out loud in my head, and that's where I got that. Does that make sense, AJ? No? Do you understand, do you understand this equals that? Yeah. Do you understand 3 times 3 is 9? Yeah, do you understand square root of 2 times square root of 2? is just going to be 2 squared, square root of 2 squared. Right? No, you don't. Square root of 2, 2 squared. And then the square root and squaring, those are opposite of each other. Those opposite each other. Like, right. What's the square root? What's the square root of 4? 2. Why is it equal to 2? Because 2 times 2 equals 4, or 2 squared equals 4. 
right? Those are opposite of each other. 2 squared equals 4, square root of 4 equals 2. Those are opposite operations. So if I have the square root of something squared, that's just going to equal my radicand, which will, which will be 2. So now I can go ahead and solve. I subtract 9, subtract 9. I get x squared equals 9. Take the square root, take the square root. x is going to equal a positive 3. And then if we know that these two are 3, if I know that that's equal to 3, then I know that's 3 and that's 3, right? This isn't part of the problem, guys. But if all the diagonals are all equal in measurement, then what do we have? If my two diagonals are equal in measurement and it's a rhombus, then it's a rhymes with a pair. Yeah, what figure rhymes with pair? Square. Right? If it's a rhombus, it already tells you it's a rhombus, right? Rhombuses don't have diagonals that are the same side. They don't have to be. Diagonals can be different measurements. The only thing we know about rhombuses, or we, one of the main points of rhombuses, is they have perpendicular diagonals. But now, if we're able to show that the diagonals are equal in measurements, then we know it's a square. Okay? 